Hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you Blender 2.8 Alpha 2. Now, this isn't a full release yet, and it probably won't be for a while. But at this point, I don't think too much is going to change. I'd be surprised if it does. So I'm going to show you a bit about Blender 2.8. Ready? Let's go. So the first thing you notice when you launch Blender 2.8 is that it's it looks similar but pretty different than what you're used to in 2.79 or any any version previous to this. The first thing you'll notice is that you get the splash screen with this little grease pencil drawing here. And then you have input and shortcuts. You can load 2.79 settings and you can save new settings. So the input and shortcuts give you Blender Default, 3ds Max, Blender 2.7x, and Maya. All right, I'm going to leave it at Blender for now. And when you're done, you can click off of that or hit enter and you're in the interface. So just like other previous versions of Blender, you have the 3D cursor. It gives you a cube to start with and uh, you just have a more refined looking grid system. Now, biggest change here, right off the bat, you'll see more different icons. So instead of having this whole side panel here, you have a number of different icons here that correspond to different things. So transform, move, rotate, scale, annotate, and measure. Up here, you have the file system. Over here, you have different tabs that go into different modes inside of Blender. And I'll, I'll get to those in a minute. Over here you have Scene, you have View Layer, and then this is pretty much the same as it's been in previous versions. So you have, uh, you know, Render tab, um, View Layer, so on and so forth, all the way down the line. And over here you have the Outliner view. Now one of the biggest changes here is not only do we have all these new icons, but we have this whole new widget here too, which is really cool, in that it allows you to quickly go to different views of your scene. This is incredibly helpful, I think. Kind of like the view cube in Maya. And you can always just middle mouse click, drag, and go back to perspective view at any moment you want. So down here we have the animate area, and then down here we have some really interesting new things that give you kind of the mouse shortcuts on how to use different things. So right clicking still works to select things and you'll see that certain things change as you go down and you look at, at this area. So this kind of gives you hints on what you can do to pro, you know, produce different results with, with what you're doing. If that makes sense. Up here we have transform orientations exposed. All right, we have snapping. And uh, we have, uh, let's see, fall off type for proportional editing and uh, pivot point, which is kind of cool. Okay, so this is this stuff used to be on the bottom. It's all moved up here now. And over here, we have overlays. We have the show transparent, which used to be down here, but now it's moved up here. And over here, we have different different shading models. So you have different different views for your scene. Now over here we have this tab, same as we had before, but instead of the whole column that comes out, it's just these kind of floating windows, which is kind of nice because they roll up and you still have access to your scene below it. All right. And just like before, I can reset my cursor. This works very similar to the way it worked before. Up here we have the move, move the view, Okay, over here we have the rendered view, toggle camera view. All right. Over here we have orthographic projection. And here we have the zoom in and zoom out. But I just generally like to use the keyboard shortcuts anyway. So middle mouse button and drag, shift middle mouse button, and then zooming in and out with the middle mouse scroll wheel just scrolling around. Now one of the cool features here is that we now have all these tabs up here. So we have layout, 
We have modeling, which exposes a whole bunch of modeling options. It pretty much just throws you right into edit mode and you can start modeling in here. We have sculpting, which brings up the sculpting menu right here and changes the shader on your, on your object. And then you get all these different sculpt options and sculpt brushes right here. We have UV editing, which changes the interface to show your mapping. So you're in edit view over here, and you have UV view over here. We have texture paint mode, which allows you to go in and paint on your on your object. Okay, it exposes all the brushes and shows you. Right now, I don't have a texture on here, which is why it's magenta. But once you do that, then you can start painting on it. All right, so you can paint in UV mode and paint directly onto your object. We have shading, which is where you can go in and just quickly build shader networks. Okay. We have animation, where you're, you have your dope sheet, and you can change dope sheet to uh, keyframes and a whole bunch of different things. Okay, dope sheet, you could change this to, say, uh, graph editor. Okay, now you have graph editor down here. We have rendering, which shows you the rendered view once you render. Compositing window which is really nice because you have a whole compositor right here and scripting if you're inclined to go in and actually write Python or you know, different coding right here. Okay. So one of the other major differences is that now these, uh, the window changes are now on the top. So this bar is now on the top. It used to be below the windows it's now above the windows so keep that in mind All right they used to be down here so this one would have changed this but not anymore now it's above here and like every other previous version of blender you can still open up new windows by clicking and dragging around All right you get this little plus icon and you can drag around and similarly you can close them so you can open up a new window with the plus, and then you can go in here with the plus, same way. Open up new windows, right. or you can use it to close windows down. Open up new windows, and then the plus changes, you can say close. So if you're in that little space, that little gap, okay? kind of tricky here but in that gap you can open up new windows or close new windows and that just takes some playing around with okay you don't have those little little slash boxes here anymore by default so you kind of just got to go and play around with it but it works very similar to old versions of blender all right so that's that's the basics without going making this too long of a video that's the basic interface changes that have happened in 2.8 a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are similar and as I do more videos on 2.8, I'll show you the differences in where, uh, where they change. And I'll probably do one where I, where I compile all the major differences in keyboard shortcuts that have changed. But a lot of the navigation stuff is still the same. So you can go in and get a feel for it and start playing with it. And I recommend that you do. Because it is a bit different and uh, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but not much. Okay? So I hope you liked this video. I hope you got something out of it. And if, if you did, like, subscribe, share hit that little bell notification, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.